Welcome to Rappahannock Issues. I'm Tom Cohen. And I'm David Kerr. And we're going to be looking at topics that are of interest to our community, both regionally and to the state. Welcome to Rappahannock Issues. I'm Tom Cohen. I'm David Kerr. We're the hosts of the show, and we're going to be talking about the 2016 presidential campaign. Uh, the primaries are in full force right now. We're taping this on February 23rd, so we're between the Democrats in having their Nevada caucus and their um, South Carolina primary on Saturday, and then Super Tuesday is coming up March 1st. Um, so as we look at this, we'll start off with the Democrats. Uh, David, that's sort of the land of your birth. What, what is your feel about um, the state of the Democratic campaign? I think that uh, the Hillary Clinton campaign uh, is still reeling from the fact that Sanders had more traction than anybody ever gave him credit for. Uh, we go back to the cold winter of New Hampshire, uh, he trounced her. Uh, curiously enough, that was where she beat Barack Obama in 2008, turned that one into a real contest. Uh, he's hoping for quite a bit of uh, support in the Super Tuesday states. He's probably going to see it. Uh, in a lot of places, it's still going to be very much the, she'll have a win, but it'll probably be close. Uh, Virginia, the numbers say pretty even. Her organization, however, is better throughout the South. Uh, his is not. As, uh, re he is certainly represented in Virginia. He's certainly represented in other southern states. But one key tie here is the African-American community, uh, important constituency of the Democratic Party. And her ties uh, are much, much stronger. And uh, frankly, I see that as being kind of a deciding factor. They're in, in uh, Nevada as well. Well, the interesting thing about Nevada is they made a big deal about the African-American vote, which uh, she did win I'd say about 80-10 or 80-12. Um, but there was a reporter from out in um, not Las Vegas um, Ron, and it, he's a, I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right, Pinscher or Posner, um, who on Saturday afternoon was saying that the, the polls in, in Nevada were so bad for Hillary on the Friday before the caucus that Harry Reid, the Democratic minority leader, um, can't get much more establishment than that. Uh, no, you can't. Contacted the union leaders, cannot get much more establishment than that, to get their workers out to vote for Hillary. And so really, the, the, and at first it was the talk was a culinary union, but then uh, he said he communicated with other unions and it was universal, um, a widespread thing. And so what really saved Hillary was the establishment union vote and the establishment Harry Reid in Nevada. Um, they will go to South Carolina uh, and do very well this weekend, in large part because of the African American vote. But, and I think you, you I'm sure you've seen this. I know from talking to people in high school, college, and graduate school, young African Americans are not involved with Hillary. They are for Bernie. Uh, and the age gap, even in Nevada, uh, older African Americans went for Hillary, the younger ones went for Bernie. Uh, and so this, this campaign is really showing some difficulties that Hillary has as a general election candidate. Um, in that, um, the way that she has a lot of negatives, um, it, it, to a certain degree, it almost feels as though for a Republican, we had this feeling during the 2012 campaign with Mitt Romney. Um, it's his turn. We're, he's rushing to the nomination, but everybody knows there's problems with this candidate. Um, and you look at the Democrats and there's problems with the Hillary campaign. You make a very, very good point. Uh, and one that uh, surprised me at first, but uh, uh, now that I've seen it and heard it enough, doesn't. And that's the young women are not supporting Bernie Sanders, I mean, no. who are supporting Bernie Sanders, and uh, are very enthusiastically supporting him. Uh, the Hillary vote has been reported several times is primarily uh, middle-aged, older women, uh, and that, that she needs a solid uh, female vote to succeed, particularly in the general election, but even for the primary. And the interesting thing with the Democrats is they have these superdelegates, which were created uh, sort of as a nice safety valve after so many years where the Democrats picked candidates that were um, not as strong in the general election. Um, 
And so you have this, this wealth, and, and, and Hillary's doing very well with the superdelegates. Uh, but John King on CNN on Caucus Day demonstrated that if from um, Caucus Day onward it was a 55-45 split, um, now granted, uh, probably South Carolina still win by 40, um, Vermont, Bernie will win that one. But if in general, the computer get, guy, get, get to Florida, right, Texas. If it's a 55-45 split, um, Hillary will go into the convention with not enough delegates to actually win on her own with just the actual real normal people delegates. What would have to push her over the top is the super delegates, um, which are the establishment figures. So those are the elected senators, congressmen, mayors of big cities, uh, former presidents, former national party leaders. Uh, and those would be the people, the establishment would be the ones that would make her win. But I've often wondered just how loyal that establishment would be if they felt she was a weak candidate at all. <laughs> they might have a lot of commitments, uh, but there's an old saying in politics that Harry Truman used to use, if you want a, if you want a friend in Washington, buy a dog. Uh, if they feel that uh, Sanders is electable and likely to be the nominee, if there's a, a bow wave behind him, which is not impossible, uh, they could get to be a little less establishment. Right. They, all politicians like to end up on the winning side. Well, and, and it may not even be that they go for for Bernie, uh, and they feel the burn. It, it, one could envision <coughs> that they're looking at this. It, it will be very difficult to win the general election if, in the convention, the the excited young people are feeling as though they were had the, the nomination taken away from them by the establishment. And not necessarily that they'll run out and vote for the Republican, but they may not vote at all. Um, would it be that the, the superdelegates would sit there and sit out, some of them sit out the first two ballots when people are committed that they have to vote for the person that, that brought them? And then be a draft, somebody like Elizabeth Warren movement, um, who might be uh, somebody that's palatable with the both camps. So mo the logic is, the conventional wisdom is that Hillary will win the nomination, but if we've seen the, the convention ways that have not been very good uh, through all of this. And it's not like the last uh, closed convention or last brokered uh, convention mm -hmm. was uh, 100 years ago. 1976, Ronald Reagan and Gerald Ford battled it out to the very end. Right, and it, there, there's sort of this, this contact comment that it's a brokered convention, there's, there's a smoke-filled room, and it's not. I mean, it would be where the delegates would actually say. Uh, we have less than a minute left, but it, as you look at the Super Tuesday states, uh, Bernie is only really up in uh, Massachusetts and um, past that West Virginia and, and Vermont. And Hillary should do well in that. And you would be do well to come back after the break. We will look into the Republican race uh, and the intricacies of that. So we ask you to come back after this break. <laughs>